Hello, everyone. I'm Zhi Zhenzhong. Today, I'm going to talk about our work, Arrow, Restoration of Air Traffic Engineering. Wide area networks are the workhouses of today's global internet services. All major online service providers like Comcast, AT&T, and Google own and operate their private vans. All these global scale backbones are built using optical fibers across continents and oceans. Because building and maintaining a global scale network costs billions of dollars, it is important for vans to be efficiently utilized. In this talk, I will present a novel system that improves the network throughput by a factor of two without compromising availability in large-scale vans. But this is not easy. It is very challenging to squeeze more throughput from a globally deployed network. In the following slides, I'm going to walk you through several important building blocks to achieve this goal. Let me start with the impact of fabricas on vans. How are optical fibers related to van links? What is a van link? Let me give a simplified example. Assume that we have an IP link between Boston and San Francisco. This IP link can transmit data between router ports. If we zoom into one end of this IP link, we see that right after the router ports, there is a device called optical transponder that converts the signal from electrical domain to optical wavelengths. After optical transponders, we use optical switch to add, drop, or switch optical wavelengths in the optical fiber network. On the fibers, we place optical amplifiers every 80 kilometers to compensate power attenuation during signal propagation. Therefore, an IP link between Boston and San Francisco is actually a logical connection supported by provision wavelengths or lambdas on fibers. Operating a global scale one while maintaining availability is challenging, mostly because of unexpected failures, especially fiber cuts. There are many reasons that lead to fiber cuts, such as disasters, construction works, or even animals. How severe are fiber cuts? To quantitatively answer this question, we study the impact of fiber cuts on a global scale van. Each peak in this figure represents a fiber cut event. For a city pair, we observe that fiber cut events happen almost every month. If we zoom into one of the events, approximately 8 terabit per second capacity is lost for 9 hours until the fiber is repaired. This is a massive loss for the IP layer capacity. If we consider more city pairs in the network, we find fiber cuts take down several terabit per second capacity quite often. The question is, how do we solve this problem? Well, the state-of-the-art approach to cope with fiber cuts requires adding backup links. On this four-node topology, to handle fiber cuts and avoid traffic loss, the state-of-the-art approach adds redundant wavelengths backup lambda 1 and backup lambda 2 on the optical layer to create backup IP link 1 and backup IP link 2. In this case, when fiber BC is cut, the network is still available. However, this approach requires redundant network hardware like router ports and transponders. Now we know that fiber cuts have a huge impact on WANs, and the state-of-the-art approach is very inefficient as it requires actual router ports and transponders to build backup IP links. Our work goes beyond the state of the art by unlocking the opportunity to restore failed IP links. Let me show you how we achieve this. We propose Arrow to reduce redundancy while maintaining network availability. Arrow is the abbreviation for Agile Restorable Optical Wavelengths. Different from the state of the art approach, when fiber cut happens, Arrow achieves the same availability goal by reconfiguring the wavelengths from broken fiber to healthy fibers to restore the lost IP capacity using the same network hardware with our redundant router ports and transponders. The next question is, how to plan IP optical restoration for Arrow? A straightforward solution is to separate the optical layer from the IP layer. By iterating over all plausible fiber cut scenarios on the optical layer, we calculate the restoration plan for each scenario that maximizes the total restore capacity in an offline manner. Then, we fit the per-scenario restoration plan into the traffic engineering formulation to optimize traffic flow allocations. An immediate question to answer is, is there enough room in the optical domain such that for every fiber cut scenarios, 
we can reconfigure all affected wavelengths. To quantitatively answer this question, we calculate the restoration ratio of each fiber in a large-scale WAN and plot the cumulative distribution function of the restoration ratio of all fibers in this figure. We observe that 62% of the fibers are only partially restorable. How does this partial restoration affect our goal of reconfiguring the failed wavelengths from broken fibers to healthy fibers? For instance, in this case, if the middle fiber is cut, we want to reconfigure the wavelengths to the top and bottom fibers. If lost wavelengths can be fully restored, then the only decision is to reconfigure all the wavelengths to revive the entire IP layer capacity loss. The decision is simple, and this is the beauty of layering in the internet architecture. But remember that in the last slide, we talk about a majority of the fibers are only partially restorable. It means we cannot restore all the lost wavelengths, and we have to be intelligent when deciding which IP link to restore, or equivalently, which wavelengths to reconfigure. Let us consider a partial restoration scenario where we can only restore three wavelengths on the top fiber and two wavelengths on the bottom fiber. In this case, there are many partial restoration candidates. All of them achieve the same amount of restored capacity on the optical layer. For WAN operators, when multiple restoration candidates restore the same amount of lost capacity, they care more about which one can actually satisfy more traffic demands or throughput on the IP layer. As a result, when restoring failed IP links, we need to consider both IP layer real-time traffic demands and optical layer restoration candidates for optimal network throughput. Therefore, to handle partial restoration, the question is, when full restoration is not possible, which partial restoration candidate leads to the best network throughput? In response, Arrow devises a normal lottery ticket abstraction to augment IP layer traffic engineering with optical layer restoration awareness. In the following slides, I'm going to present the Arrow traffic engineering system that dynamically restore failed IP links and their fiber cut scenarios. To select the optical layer restoration candidate that has the maximum network throughput, the ideal solution is to formulate the problem into a cross-layer IP optical traffic engineering formulation. This formulation jointly considers the traffic demand and network topology on the IP layer. It also takes the optical layer topology and fiber cut scenarios into account. Theoretically, this cross-layer formulation can find the optimal traffic splitting ratios on the IP layer and the optimal restoration candidate on the optical layer. However, the problem with this cross-layer formulation is that it is an integer problem and contains billions of variables for today's WAN topology, making it computational intractable. The root causes for the computational intractability of the cross-layer formulation are that the IP and optical layers are orthogonal. Hence, formulating a cross-layer problem will result in a huge expansion of problem space. Another important factor is the mapping between IP links and their corresponding wavelengths is a binary decision variable. Therefore, it makes the problem to be integer and NP-hard. To solve this problem and avoid excessive computational complexity, Arrow proposes to abstract the optical layer and only fit essential information into the IP layer. We first solve the optical layer integer problem in an offline manner and record the field IP link's restorable capacity as lottery tickets. After that, we fit these lottery tickets into the IP layer traffic engineering and solve the T only on the IP layer to achieve a reasonable problem space. With the lottery ticket abstraction, we design arrow traffic engineering system. We first generate multiple restoration candidates using a modified randomized rounding algorithm for each failure scenario and represent them as lottery tickets. Basically, the lottery ticket abstracts the details of wavelength reconfiguration on the optical layer and only contains essential information on how each failed IP link could potentially be restored. Then, we feed this abstracted information into the arrow TE formulation on the IP layer. Because of our lottery ticket abstraction, arrow's restoration of our TE formulation is a linear program, hence can return traffic splitting ratios on the IP layer and restoration plan on the optical layer 
with fast runtime on today's WAN topology. Finally, we evaluate the gains of restoration of wear WANs. We build a production-level optical network testbed to emulate part of the production WAN. It includes four optical switches connected by over 2,000 kilometer optical fibers. On these fiber links, we deploy 34 amplifiers. We also deploy 16 pairs of optical transponders to provision wavelengths on this testbed. We run a fiber cut restoration trial on the testbed. Initially, there are 16 wavelengths running on the optical layer, supporting an IP layer topology of four IP links. We simulate a fiber cut scenario where the fiber between C and D is cut. Therefore, 14 wavelengths that are running on this fiber are failed, and their corresponding IP links, AC, BD, and CD, are lost. We then use the key idea of Arrow to reconfigure the failed 14 wavelengths to healthy fibers. Our experimental results show that, compared with state-of-the-art approach, Arrow can reduce the reconfiguration delay from 70 minutes to 8 seconds. We run large-scale simulations on three WAN topologies with different network sizes. For B4 and IBM topologies, we use traffic matrices generated from small. For Facebook topology, we use real traffic traces from production measurement. We use a combination of fiber disjoint and k shortest path routing for tunnel selection. We compare Arrow with state-of-the-art failure of IRT algorithms, FFC and TWAR. We also compare with ECMP as a baseline. The key metric in evaluating the performance of a WAN is the availability of the network. In this figure, a better T algorithm should be able to sustain high availability at a larger demand scale. We consider several T algorithms. For example, FFC can sustain at least 99.9 .9 availability when demand is scaled by 2.1. When the demand scale is larger, FFC's availability performance quickly drops below 99%. TWAR and SMP perform similarly. We observe that Arrow can support twice more demand with the same level of availability than prior T approaches. By reconfiguring wavelengths to restore failed IP links, we can support twice more traffic while maintaining a highly available network. Note that the throughput gain is achieved without adding more redundancy on the IP layer. This massive gain of throughput in Arrow is the result of two important properties. First and foremost, Arrow is able to restore failed IP links and bring lost capacity back after failures. Secondly, Arrow's lottery ticket enables the traffic engineering system to navigate the vast possibility of optical restoration candidates and select the best restoration candidate based on real-time traffic demand. For instance, if we only had one lottery ticket, the gain would have been only 15%. Most of the throughput gains come from the lottery ticket design. In conclusion, Arrow is a traffic engineering system that reconfigures wavelengths during fiber cuts. When restoration is done on the optical layer and T is done on the IP layer, our lottery ticket abstraction makes cross-layer traffic engineering feasible at large scale to meet the stringent T runtime requirements. Our experiments show that Arrow supports 2 to 2.4 times more demand without compromising availability. Our code is available online and we welcome more colleagues in the community to join us and explore the new exciting opportunity on the optical layer together. Thank you for your attention.